Hello everyone, today we have a new keyboard for review. This is the Techware Veal 80 sent to us by Techware, one of the popular brands of gaming accessories here in the Philippines. The Techware Veal 80 is one of the newer keyboard lineups from Techware. It is a 75% keyboard with three mode connectivity so you can have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection via dongle uh, wired okay uh, usb-c connection and bluetooth connection which is really really good for beginners in this hobby a lot of times when you're going into the keyboard mechanical keyboard hobby you would want multiple connectivity what i like about this keyboard is that it comes in completely built with a very good quality keycap so they have die sub PBT keycaps included in the kit and mind you not all of the die sub keycaps that you can get um, from pre-built keyboards are of this quality so a lot of times you will get keycaps that are too thin doesn't sound too nice with legends that are so so this one really really impressed me that the legends and the quality of the keycaps the way how they feel and the way how they sound really good it's really good um, you have several switches that comes with it um, you have the option to get it with um, Gatron red brown yellow or black switches the unit that Techware sent me over came in with the yellow switches which personally I really like um, these are not the pro yellow versions this is the standard Gatron yellow version. They're okay, they're okay. Uh, it comes in with a knob and of course, um, RGB lighting, which again, for beginners in the hobby, very, very appealing. Um, it's a top mounted design with a metal plate, which is not the best plate material in my opinion. Um, you could go with softer plates such as aluminum, better if it's polycarbonate or FR4, but again, that's just preference. What I do like about this it is that it already comes in with its plate foam dampener and a lowercase foam dampener, which really, really shapes the sound of the keyboard. So before we get into my thoughts on this keyboard, um, let's do a quick sound test. All right, so um, it sounds good, okay? So again, I'm viewing this keyboard with the mindset that this is an entry-level keyboard for those who want to get started in the mechanical keyboard hobby. When I started the mechanical keyboard hobby, my first keyboard was the K-Cron K2 V2, which is a good keyboard, but I think the VL80 is way better. Um, why do I think so? Um, number one, this keyboard sounds way better out of the box. Um, I love the acoustics of this keyboard. Um, you have to modify this, you can modify this, but you can still use it in its stock form. And a lot of newbies, a lot of beginners into the hobby are not that confident in modding their precious keyboards yet until, until the time that they, they become brave enough to do so this keyboard will get them through because in the stock form it's already good you can already use it by no way is it at the level of the keychron q series or the freebird 60 that i have here right now but again at the stand at the standpoint at the viewpoint of a beginner it's a good keyboard okay uh it comes in with the gatron yellow switches which i think are good stock you can loop this up you can loop this up and it will improve the sound of the switches but again you can use it stock 
the key cron that I got when I when I first got into the hobby came in with the brown switches. The options there were red, brown, and blue. Definitely, I won't be going for blue, so it's either red or brown. I went for the browns. But they're okay. They're okay. They, they improve when lube, but um, if I were given a choice to start all over again, I'd definitely go with the yellows. So this keyboard is perfect. It has the yellow switches. Okay. Um, the stabilizers are okay. The unit that I get here, I think it's the backspace. So the backspace and the space bar. So there's a little rattle that I get on the backspace and the space bar, which we will fix in a while. I will show you how to fix this in the modding guide. Compared with the first keyboard, again, that I had, the K2, this one has a knob, which is really awesome especially for those who want to control their volume using the knob. So this keyboard has a lot of things going for it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to fix the stabilizers. Oops. Ah, really rapidly. I've learned throughout this modding hobby that uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So. We're not going to fix all of the stabilizers. We're going to fix just the ones with the rattle. So this one and this one. All right, so the technique that I'm going to use here is what we call the micro pore mod. Uh, and probably we should jelly tape mod this space bar. See how it will improve the sound. So these are the stabilizers. It's pre-lube. Okay. The problem with stabilizers, this one is uh, the tolerances are not that tight. So there's a lot of space for the, see that space? There's a lot of space for the, for the wire to rattle around. That's why it's rattling. So we dry up the lube first on this wire. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a tape. We're gonna put a micro port tape, okay? on the wire here. So the goal is to reduce the tolerance. So when doing this mod, make sure that uh, you keep everything even so that the side around the wire has an equal layer of thickness of that micro part tape. So you just put it enough that they meet edge to edge. Otherwise, if it's too thick, it's gonna be mushy. This is how it should look like after um, putting the microport tape on both ends and then the next step is to put lube um, I prefer using the Crytox 205 Gray Zero or Zion Studios switch lubes uh, They do have stabilizer lubes, which is the counterpart of XHTBDC But with the microport tape, I find it to be mushy So it's either the switch the stabilizer lube without microport tape or the microport tape plus the switch lube That's my favorite combo Next is you put the lube on the housing. Uh, this is how I do it. Um, with stabilizers like this with a lot of loose space, you can be very generous with your lubricant so as to eliminate those, um, those unwanted sound. The space bar was a bit hollow, so I did the jelly tape mod on it. So if you're not familiar with the jelly tape mod, it is what it is I have a video on that but basically you just put a jelly tape behind the space bar making sure that it doesn't hit any of the switches or the stabilizers it makes a whole lot of difference for your um, space bar the next thing that we're gonna do is to open up the case and do the tempest tape mod uh, this keyboard will really benefit from the tempest tape mod I had a really hard time opening up the case um, again with the light chi and the like uh, it's really hard to pry it open but this one unusually I wasn't able to separate the top and the lower case until after several minutes I figured out that there's supposed to be a screw so please please uh, unscrew the two screws underneath the feet and then you're good to go Underneath the PCB, there are two connections that you have to disconnect. 
the one is for the daughter board of the knob and the other is for the battery um, disconnect that and then pull out your PCB and you can do the tempest tape mod and then after that just simply put everything back together and that's as simple as it gets that's my modding guide uh, I don't think you don't have to do anything extraordinary for this keyboard so let's hear the sound test So my final thoughts on the VL80, who is it for? It's for those beginners wanting to dive into the mechanical keyboard hobby who does not want to complicate life. With the VL80, you get a really good package out of the box with little to no modding needed. And yet, you still have enough room for improvement in case you want to go in that direction. The VL80 is, yes, technically a rebrand of the more popular NJ80 keyboard and the Lightchi G80 which I have extensively reviewed with some MyDoor modifications like the daughter board on the um, knob that personally I think does not make enough of a difference in sound and performance. So you can check out the sound tests that I already have in the channel with different switches and you would know that this keyboard is one of my favorite keyboards for the budget level that you have. There are two main reasons why I would choose the VL80 over the competitor brands. Number one, it's locally available with warranty and support from Techware Philippines. And that means a lot, especially for those beginner who are spending their hard-earned money for their very first, for their very first keyboard. Um, that's very important. Uh, unlike other competitor brands, Lychee or Aco boards that you order from Shopee and ships abroad, um, this one, there's local supply and availability. You get it very fast. My unit came in after three days of ordering it. So uh, if that is important to you, then the VL80 might be the better choice. And number two, more importantly, it comes for me with good keycaps and decent switches. That's very important. The keycap profile and design of the other brands that I've checked out uh, are not to my liking. Again, very, very subjective. This this hobby is subjective, all right? Um, the Veal, on the other hand, have thick keycaps with very good feel and sound. The choice of the colorway, the black on white, was really good aesthetically for me it matches well the color of the keyboard case. What about other options on the market? Um, in the 75% layout, honestly, there's too many to mention. Uh, I would want to compare it to just two main boards that I have personal experience, the Keychron K2 V2 and the Akko ACR Pro 75. Uh, do, do wait for the review, it's coming up soon. So um, the VL80 smokes the K2 V2, period out of the box this is simply the better keyboard the Akko ACR Pro 75 might be a different story uh, it has legit gasket mounting design very bouncy and soft typing feel compared to the veal which is more on the stiffer side and again as I've said a lot of times it's stiff but it's very pleasant okay um, the Akko however for my taste um, there's a trade-off of aesthetics and the north facing PCB so at the end of the day, my recommendations stay the same. If you are a beginner looking to get a mechanical keyboard that you don't have to mod or mod minimally, the VL80 is a very viable option for you. If you want to mix, match, and build a keyboard from scratch, uh, you can still consider this, but there are also a lot of options out there. So that's my review. Thank you for supporting this channel. You guys are awesome. 1K sub and counting. 
So again, please do like and subscribe for more content. There are a lot of reviews that I am going to make in the next few weeks. I hope to see you there.